Fresh Tilled Soil is a web design company that specializes in designing rich user experiences for its clients. Creative user interfaces, engaging web applications, design, business, and web consulting are just a few of the services they provide. Their clients include Fortune 500 companies, Harvard and Boston University, Brigham and Women's Hospital, and the Massachusetts Massachusetts Institute of Technology, as well as Microsoft, HubSpot, GE, Ritz-Carlton, Herc Street Financial. I'm Lane Sutton, and this is The Bottom Line. I'm Ellie Berger. Our guest today is Richard Banfield, the CEO of Fresh Tilled Soil. Welcome to The Bottom Line. Thank you very much. Let's get started with your company name, Fresh Tilled Soil. Now, where did that come from? There has to be a story. <laughs> it's a little odd. Um, we wanted to name it something that somebody would remember, so not just you know digital design Boston or something boring. Um, and we wanted to wanted the name to be metaphoric of the idea that everybody has the potential to be great, and every business has the potential to do something really amazing if they have the right design, the right pre presentation. Um, and so, by thinking of this idea of a fertile ground and tilling that soil. It's the same idea that uh, a farmer might approach his, his land every day and say, hey, what am I going to get out of this? What does this, this soil hold for me? So. That's a really good idea. <laughs> yeah, that's very interesting. Now, what do you mean when you say that your company provides remarkable user experiences to your clients? So the word remarkable I borrowed from one of my big-time heroes in marketing, a guy called Seth Godin. Remarkable really means, is it worth remarking? Is it worth talking about? Is it worth something um, so exceptional that you would go and tell somebody else about? So our endeavor is to create user experiences through design, so whether you're using a web application or a website, that people will remark about. They'll say, wow, this was really cool. This was interesting. This is something I would like to tell other people about. Because when that happens, that kind of viral marketing tends to drive additional users and additional engagement. And I can tell that really is what separates your company from others. Well, you know, we're not just about designing pretty pictures. I think you can be really good at designing pretty pictures, but it's really hard to make those pictures worth talking about and mm -hmm. worth remarking about. Them. And it's really about an experience, not so much just about an image. And a picture is worth a thousand words, right? Hopefully, yeah. Depending <laughs> on the picture. Exactly. Um, so, do your applications work on desktop or laptop computers? So we focus just on web applications and now mobile. Uh, we don't do any desktop uh, work at work all. At all. Um, that's a very conscious choice for us. Um, I'm particularly passionate about the web and I wanted to stay in an area that I could feel very engaged with and emotionally connected to. So, um, does it work on an iPad or a Galaxy also? It yeah, does? most of the designs that we work on have to be compatible across all mm -hmm. the, the typical browsers and then most of the modern devices that you guys are familiar with, you know, the iPads, the iPhones, the Androids, the, the Galaxy. In fact, I picked up a Galaxy this morning because we have a new site that we need to test. Wow. Now, where do you see the future of websites and design? Well, the future is that um, right now there's a school of thinking that says that applications apps, as most people know them, yeah. will eventually take over. And the truth is what we're seeing is a reverse trend where apps have become very popular right now, but with HTML5, a lot of companies are saying, well, why don't we just design our websites as if they were apps? So that when you access them via your mobile device, you get the same kind of app experience mm -hmm. that you would without having to download the app. So we're seeing you know, a little bit of flux at the moment. Nobody's quite sure where we're going to go. But the future definitely is in the web as a, a medium. Um, the devices are the things that are going to be interesting. We don't really know where that is. Have you been adapting your websites to match HTML5 for your clients now? Some of them, yes. Those clients that are at that point that they need to do that because their audiences are uh, using that technology or it's important for them because of the devices they use. Obviously, if your um, your audience is not particularly interested in that type of experience, then it's not that important. So it depends so on the client. My question here is, what is HTML5? Because I'm very lost in what's going on here. <laughs> <laughs> well, HTML is hypertext markup language, and that is pretty much what the web experiences are written in. So any website or web application that you visit, the visual layer, the, the layer that you can actually see, is written in HTML. And HTML5 is the latest version of that. 
Very interesting. Thank you for filling me in there. So did you always know that you wanted to run your own company or did that just happen along the way? Mm, I suppose at some level I knew that it was something I really wanted to do. My dad had, had been an entrepreneur. He had also had a corporate experience, so I'd seen both sides. Um, and there was a part of me that liked the idea of driving your own idea. And um, I've been involved in a lot of businesses. Some of them haven't been very successful. Some of them have. And uh, entrepreneurship is not for everybody. It's a scary, um, ever-changing environment. But it's also very rewarding when you get it right. Definitely. And, and failure is actually important because you need to make mistakes to learn from them right. and proceed to actually succeed. And you notice there are no books about success, or no, about failure rather. There are tons about success right. because people don't want to learn about failure, but it's a way of life. Absolutely. And if you create a culture where it's okay to fail and learn from that failure and then move on to what comes next, which is clearly success, um, you create a culture of of, of safety for people so that they can work and be their best and not worry that every time they make a mistake you're going to come down on them. Well, one question I have is um, many people that are trying to be um, an entrepreneur and start their own business, they are probably coming into some of the same um, failures or troubles. So how did you get over your failures? Even in this highly technologically connected world, your best resource is still people best place you can go for advice is people who've done it before, who've been through the successes and failures. I would even go as far to say as interview and talk to the people who have failed mm -hmm. before you talk to the people that have succeeded because they, they have a much richer experience and certainly more lessons that are worth uh, talking about than those people who are successful because when you're successful only and you haven't had the experience of failure, you sometimes don't actually see what's coming down the track and, and what to be aware of. So people, surround yourself with great people, uh, experienced people, and, and connect with them as much as possible because they have, they have lessons that you will never even have to learn, hopefully. Now, what did you do for your clients such as Microsoft, GE, and the Ritz-Carlton hotels? Uh, across a whole lot of different things. Um, GE, we did an application design for uh, implementation at the various hospitals that they, because uh, it's GE Healthcare is actually the, the client that we worked with. Um, Microsoft, we did a social media campaign, um, which was to promote their uh, products that they give to students, to young students, um, as they're emerging from college. And uh, for Ritz Carlton, we do all of their Facebook work, so designing their Facebook tabs and those experiences, um, so that when you go to the local Ritz Carlton or when you go on vacation and you want to go and talk about it on Facebook, you, you actually engage through one of the experiences that we created. And that's so important for brands to act as humans a bit and the humanization of them. And I've seen that across a lot of brands as I also work in the social media industry mm -hmm. and major brands are now having to adapt to that. Correct, yeah, absolutely. So do you set goals for yourself or do you have a, a plan of what you wanted to accomplish before starting this? So I'm a super geek when it comes to, to goals. I really believe in them. I think they're super essential to any kind of path. Um, what's really the most important thing about goals is not how you get there, but what it is that you set as the goal. So the horizon is more important than the path. You, don't, you can take a different path if you want, or if you get sidetracked, or you need to pivot or change along the way, uh, just as you know, we were surrounded by sports commentary. In this building, um, you know, if you're trying to get to the goal line, it's you don't always take a straight line. Sometimes you have to sidestep and take some changes along the way. Right, it's yeah. much more important to be aware of what your goal is and then figure out how to get there along the way. So you don't have to have a step-by-step -step approach. You just have to have a very clear vision of where you want to be. Well, those are great words of wisdom, Richard. Uh, we'll be right back after this break with more great uh, insight from our guest, Richard Banfield. Don't go away.